Hi, uh, welcome to everyone to Wikimedia 213. Uh, I'm Ivan Martinez from Wikimedia Mexico, and uh, he's Carlos Colina from Wikimedia Venezuela and Israel. We were talking about a uh, challenge and needs in for developing content in you know, languages. One of the main challenges of the foundation and the Wikimedia movement. We want to share some experience in our countries about the work in, uh, in, the, in the indigenous languages. Um, we are from two uh, chapters from Ibero-Cop Initiative. This is an, an initiative uh, uh, of Spanish spoken uh, chapters based. Uh, and if you want to know more about this initiative, we are uh, open to questions. And, if you give us the information, if we can start. Kareo, to see here. Good afternoon and uh, welcome. Uh, the idea of uh, working on uh, projects in uh, endangered and uh, indigenous languages of uh, Latin America. It's roughly based on you know the, the slogan we all we are so proud of. Imagine every a world in which every single human being can freely share in the sum of all knowledge, which is our commitment, right? But <coughs> we want to focus on uh, every single person, meaning that people that is that belongs to a minority, a language minority, is always like put aside in, in, for the benefit of the majority, right? Uh, it is often the case in Latin America with uh, the indigenous people. Uh, do you hear me without the microphone? No. Yeah. No? Okay, so um, the thing is that the Wikimedia projects in indigenous languages, they have different needs than the projects in mainstream languages. Even in countries that, is, um, that have no uh, racial issues or social issues, they have different niche, different uh, needs because of the indigenous peoples. Okay, more often the case, uh, indigenous peoples have grown up, have developed on the margin of the society, which is it is not our duty as Wikimedia. <coughs> and the bottom it is, I mean, we have to, we are struggling to make the world a better place, right? But um, the idea what we have is to support them 
differently because they have a different view of the world. They have different merits. Uh, social, linguistic, religious, um, economic, geographic, and so on. We can set up many examples here, uh, which probably all of you are aware of, but that makes a, a Wikipedia differently. Uh, for instance, um, the speakers of native languages, American indigenous languages, they usually live very far away from the big cities and uh, very far away from the mass, uh, you know, the, the technological infrastructure. Saying that, they have little access to uh, Wikipedia. Actually, many of you, I, stu I studied YU at university. And uh, when I spoke to my teacher about working on a Wikipedia in an Aboriginal language, she was like, really? Is it possible? And then I spoke to some of our students. They were shocked. Even though they were native speakers of Spanish also, they couldn't believe it. That, Is it possible? How can we do it? I mean, we don't have the money. No, you don't need money to create a Wikipedia. So there are many barriers apart from, from those that I mentioned. Also, the lack of uh, information about what the Wikipedia, the Wikimedia projects are, and how to reach them is one of the strategies we have to we have tried to, to follow in order to reach to them. <coughs> and so uh, why are the indigenous languages important in the Wikimedia movement? Why we are we are talking about this 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 topic? Uh, well, uh, we want to represent our, our, our mission says uh, we want to uh, uh, to uh, the sum of all knowledge and the sum of all knowledge represents all the non-traditional non uh, knowledge considered by the Western vision. Uh, just the second point is the indigenous languages have uh, a strong uh, commitment with a non-Western vision. And this is, a uh, uh, at least in Mexico, this is one of the main uh, issues that we <coughs> detect in the work within the indigenous communities. Uh, the, th the third point is, uh, for get a really neutral point of view, we need to reduce systemic bias in the in the rights of the Wikipedia articles. The indigenous communities have another uh, kind of facts, another kind of versions, uh, despite all the, the the mainstream versions of the of the same facts in in, in the movement. Uh, and well, uh, uh, another reason that we uh, becomes. Um, very happy to us is uh, in, uh, the indigenous languages in Wikimedia are encouraging the efforts of a new generations of digital natives who are speakers of indigenous languages and, uh, and uh, the digital natives, the uh, jongers from for 14 or 15, uh, 15 years are interested in their uh, native languages not of a like a, a, a I think of, her, or, 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 of his grandparents or something old, the, 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 the indigenous are not proud of, of their own languages. But if we work uh, uh, his languages in digital projects, uh, maybe the people are more interested than only the oral work. What is the advantage of create new repositories on the indigenous perspective? Uh, well, we want uh, we want to have uh, silenced versions in history to know uh, too much uh, versions in the same history are very distant from the winners and from the losers. Two, uh, the, uh, we we, we uh, want a comparative version of a same fact in, in, this, in this case and. Uh, we have the possibility of have non-traditional uh, knowledge. This is uh, like medicine, like uh, like culture, like dances, like uh, like songs, like uh, too much uh, things that is not a strict uh, knowledge like we consider. So. Uh, so most of the indigenous, the natives they have become interested in this phenomenon. And it has uh, become very popularized through social networking, such as Twitter, blogs, Facebook, you know, all that. 
uh, usually when, when, they, when you come to them and you, you speak to them about the possibility of creating a Wikipedia in their own, in their own mother tongue, they, they, have, they come with several questions and uh, they also discuss and uh, present like what is truth. Sometimes what is truth for us is not truth, truth for them because they have a different view of the world. Like, uh, the, the, the cosmogony, the cosmo, the cosmogony, yes. Cosmogony view of the world is totally different to the Western world. Regardless, even if they adopt a Western religion, like Christianity, Islam, they, they, still, they still stick to that vision of the world. They still keep to their traditions. Uh, their vision of knowledge is always shared. Actually, that's something we, we'll talk about a little later. But uh, their vision of knowledge has always been like, it has to be shared. When I, have, I have knowledge and I share it with divine, and he also shares it with someone else, because it doesn't belong to him, it doesn't belong to me either. Um, but there's a limit on which knowledge should be shared. There are some people who are responsible for transmitting that knowledge from one generation to the other, but there's also some people who control what should be shared. It's for the benefit of the growth of the nation. Uh, now, the five pillars of Wikipedia, the, the whole movement, they are disputed because if we are posting uh, an article on Wikipedia in any native American language. What is the, uh, the facts? Sometimes we need to we can present the references, right? How do you present the references of uh, an indigenous language spoken in the border between Brazil and Bolivia spoken by only 300 people? How do you dispute those facts? If no anthropologists have been in touch with them, there is no paperwork about it, it's, it's hard. It's hard to confront it. So I think we, at some point we have to be a little more relaxed because there are quite a few uh, Native American people who don't have uh, academic papers. They have no access. They haven't had any access to uh, academic resources. Even though in their countries they they have, and there is uh, affirmative action and all that, still there is there's a lot, there is a lack of. Uh, information that can be officially contrasted and disputed. That's, that is one uh, one of the different views we have to agree when we're working on a, diff on a Wikimedia project in an endangered language. Um, of course, like I said, there are values that we have in common. Uh, the, collect the collective and collaborative work. And also the collaborative responsibilities. If, for instance, we are creating, uh, let's say we have a wiki project inside of one Wikipedia in one language. Let's say, I don't know, Maya. Uh, we are all responsible for the project. But if I make a mistake, it's not my mistake. It's everybody's mistake. Because the thing is that I should have been aware of what I was doing. And everybody should, somebody will come and help me fix it. But it's not that I'm going to be punished for what I did. Also. The work, uh, the, uh, the work is collective. I am not the only one who's creating the article. I am not the, one, the only one behind one specific project. There's a bunch of people behind me, but actually not behind me, with me, at the same line. It's like a horizontal uh, structure, not like a hierarchy structure. So what we have now, the structure of uh, regular users, uh, admins, bureaucrats, size ops, sometimes, you know, that, that pyramid is doesn't work, doesn't adjust perfectly to the to the mindset of the indigenous peoples. Uh, for the final part of this presentation, I uh, want to share some examples about the work in indigenous languages where we are uh, doing in our countries. In Mexico, uh, we are focused uh, in the translation of the of the core of uh, of the wiki software. Uh, we want to first to, to put all the all, all, all the media wiki software in the indigenous languages and then uh, forward. Uh, uh, in Mexico, Wikimedia Mexico are doing translatons uh, like hackathons or editatons. We are called translatons to Nahuatl, the, the old uh, language of the Aztecs, 
And Yucatan Maya is the second language that is spoken in, indigenous spoken in Mexico. And Wixabrica is the, the language of which all is, you know, the, which all is indigenous. And we are, we are really happy with the, with, with the results. Uh, the people are, are working uh, with co common values of, of collective work. Uh, they know very, very, very well the, the values of, 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 of collective work. Because in the communities, they, the, the daily work of food, of clothes, or, 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 or the repair of the streets are, are doing in, 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 in collective. And currently, we have the three strongest groups uh, to, uh, making travatons uh, every three months. And we think we can, uh, uh, we can have a, in, in uh, Yucatan Maya and Wixabrica uh, the next year uh, translated all the lines of the Media Wiki software uh, in, in Mexico. Uh, after he spoke about the Mexican case, now we're speaking, uh, I'll give some insights about the, what we have done in Venezuela. We have started with translation. We have been, been able to organize translations for several reasons, geographic reasons. Most of the Wikimedians are in Caracas and it's very hard to go to the western part of the, the country, which is next to the border, and, and other political reasons. Um, we have started, we already, we're already well advanced to the translation into Wayuniki of uh, MediWiki. Uh, we have 67% of the messages of the, of the core messages and 8% uh, if I remember well of uh, the mobile version, the, the, you know, for uh, mobile devices. And 62% of uh, Wiktionary. Uh, with Anu and Carina, we have taken a different approach because most of the, transla the translation into Wayuneki has been done by, uh, jointly by three people, which is uh, yours truly, uh, and two Wayu. One who was my teacher, and another friend of mine that is also also belongs to the chapter. And uh, there have been some some differences, like political differences between them. So we haven't moved forward, but. We're, we're on the way of solving that. Uh, with Anu and Carina, we have taken a different approach. We have uh, started doing offline. We got all the core messages, and we're distributing the messages. So everybody does its own version, because sometimes you have a word, because many technical words doesn't exist, don't exist in, in the Native American languages. And so you have to come either, or you import it roughly, or you import like, you know, Unify it, adapt it to the, to the language, or you just come up with a different word. Or two words that might resemble the intention of what you're trying to do. So, uh, uh, what we have done is that we distribute the, you know, the sheets of paper with all the messages, and everybody writes the word and the reasoning. Why it should be like this? And then at the end, after we finish, we're just going to meet and collect all that, and then we'll come up with a unified version. So, we're going to have different versions, and nobody. It's, it's also collaborative work, it's offline, but it's easier for them also, because most of them don't have access to a computer, they have to either walk or go to an internet cafe and rent a computer for some time. So if they have a sheet of paper, they just, you know, they, after dinner, they just sit down and review them. It's easier, and also they consult with their grandparents, which is a, a very good uh, idea, to consult with their grandparents, because they, they master the languages. Um, Probably uh, next month, we're starting a co-op in, uh, in the Universidad del Sur. We, uh, there is an association of uh, indigenous uh, students, and we have, been, we have been in touch with them, and we're probably going to you know, redo the, the translation into Wayuniki together as a group. There are like 60 people, so it's, it looks promising to me. Um, we have uh, difficulties because the groups are smaller, Unlike Mexico, where there are like millions of uh, speakers of Nahuatl, uh, uh, that's a lot. In for Wayuneki, which is the most spoken language in, in Venezuela, we have roughly 400,000 uh, people. So it's a little harder for us. But uh, I think we're we're fine. We're we're good. We could be better. But uh, at least I, I I can tell that I have seen progress, which is good. That's I mean two years ago, one year ago, it was. Almost nothing. That's, that's something. If you have questions and uh,
have uh, any questions about this, we are open. Thank you. Uh, I will say uh, thank you, Nawa. Uh, for Russian, so we need to see how to calculate this, right? So you need to substitute the number in our hand into the n. So if you have one, then it is like one more 10 is one, and one more 100 is not 11. If that statement is passing, then it's singular, or whatever form corresponding to one. And similarly, whatever, whatever formula that passes to the current number, that is the plural form. And uh, the complexity is like we have to support all the 300 languages with this one and we have to support all the complexity. So uh, just to demonstrate how we are doing this. Yep, so this is a demo of how these plural forms are coming. As you know, English has only one plural form. The rule is it is singular if in this one. Okay. I hope everybody can see this. The formula is written in the um, green one. So I'm switching the language to Russian because now it's about the Russian. Okay, so Russian. So these are the three plural forms and I have the number one. So the first formula is passing, so it's the singular according to the Russian plural forms. So I'm changing this to say two. So it's the convert again. It's the second plural form. So what happens if I give, say, 200? It's the third plural form, right? So similarly, if I take Arabic, you have many plural forms. OK, so it is zero form, one form, two form, few form, many form. And there is a default form other than this, that is everything else, mostly decimal numbers, 1.5 or uh, 100 point, 3 point, something. So this many plural forms are there. So you need to calculate. You can calculate what is the number. So if none is passing, so it's the other form. Uh, one there. OK, so the whatever is the gain is passing, okay? Um, so this is, this is the plural support we are using and we, as I said in the first slide, we are making sure that this plural support for is available as an open source library. You can use it in any purpose for your academic research or your, in your website where you have to display number, uh, um, some, some kind of strings like that. An immediate use case example I can um, tell immediately is, suppose you are creating a social network, you are uploading photos, you want to say that this user uploaded n number of photos. So you need to make sure that the sentence, um, non-English sentence is grammatically correct and organic. You need to use this kind of mechanism to make sure that the message has correct grammatical form. So the ne next uh, feature we have sub we started supporting is the digit grouping. Um, digit grouping is very simple to understand. It's like if you write a long number, you usually use commas to separate numbers to make it easier to read. And English, as you know, it's a group of three, right? Um, but it's not always group of three. In Malayalam, it is first three, then two, group of two. And it is more interesting for the languages like uh, Dutch. The comma and period are interchanged. So one, two, three. It's not a 123 point. It is. It is the decimal place starts after nine. Comma means the decimal place. Uh, and uh, the other thing is, you are seeing this Arabic numerals, and many languages use their own numerals, right? For example, Hindi uses their own numerals. So this is a um, Bengali numerals. Whatever you see in that, um, this is a, num a numeral supporter in Bengali. So we need to support all this format, and it is available at the PHP side, the server side, and the JavaScript side. You need to just refer this 
um, methods. We need to set the language, we need to use the format number in PHP. Same thing is available in um, JavaScript site, so that users are seeing correct digit group numbers and uh, according to their language. Yes, so maybe we can also post grammar, uh, where is essentially a special case of grammar. And uh, in Medivh, the grammar is very language dependent, puts down code, so it's not very scalable. Either we have a, uh, some language module plugged in, but we don't. So we did the next best, next best thing, and that support for the existing grammar forms in JavaScript, so that, they, so that they can be used in front end code. <coughs> So um, these libraries are released as open source components to make sure that it can be used outside MediaWiki as general purpose JavaScript libraries. And uh, we termed this initiative as uh, Project Milkshake. And we have these four components, um, jQuery web forms for the font embedding um, to make sure that uh, non-Latin and minority languages that are not well supported by the operating system and browsers are readable by serving the fonts from uh, Wikimedia servers. And uh, that feature is available in all Wikimedia sites now. Um, and to make sure that people can type in their language without any external support from the operating system or whatever computer they're using in maybe universities, chaos, or whatever. But we, they, we provide the input method support built into the Wikipedia. Um, I don't know how many people used already it, but I, I'm going to just uh, demonstrate it, how it is available in Wikipedia sites. The third one is about the language selection. I, I hope many people have seen the long list of languages in the left side of the Wikipedia articles. It's the number of languages we support, the, or the articles in which, uh, or the languages in which the article is present. That kind of big language selection we have to provide every time. And uh, uh, scrolling through that big list is always a problem because we are supporting some 300 plus languages. And so we started a new interface for the language selection in Wikimedia. Um, I'm going to demonstrate it. Um, the, another one is about whatever we said about the plural support, digit groupings, and um, um, number formatting, grammar, all those things we are releasing as an open source library, and that is called the jQuery IATN. So I'm going to show a, a quick demo of all these libraries. All these libraries are commonly used in the Universal Language Selector extension, uh, which is deployed in all Wikimedia websites now. So I'm going to demonstrate now. So it's available in Commons. You can see a language selector on top here. So Commons is a multi-lingual wiki. Everybody knows that it is available in all languages. You can select the interface language using this form and the language selector comes. Uh, of course, uh, we provide a IP based, GeoIP based language listing. That means I am at Hong Kong now, I get suggestions. I don't have the phones right now. It's, uh, uh, these are Chinese language for now. But, uh, see, these are all the Chinese language. So uh, this has a lot of features like you can select the languages by auto-completion, you can select the languages based on but, um, based on the map, it's cut off, the screen is cut off, but uh, you have Australia or South Korea. Mm -hmm. uh, it also has cross-language search, you can search in any language in any other script. You can search for the script, for example, I can search for Devanagari. All the languages written in Devanagari script by just starting, start typing by Dev. Or any script written in Cyrillic by Cyrillic. You get the language selection. Um, so you can do the language selection there. And you can see few settings here, display settings and input settings. Based on, uh, using that, you can use uh, input methods. I'm switching to English Wikipedia. Uh, in English Wikipedia, it has it is not a one website. It has multiple websites and multiple versions. So the language selector is here. So you can see here. 
Okay, so you have input methods. Suppose I want to type in, say, one another language. I can just switch to this one and I have all these input methods available. I can choose it and I can just start using it. Similarly, for font display, I can choose some fonts for English. Generally, for English, no font is required, but sometimes uh, we provide one font um, that is called the open dyslexic. This is for the people suffering from the dyslexic. Um, uh, it's, a, it's a disease like you see the letters jumbled in the screen, and you can change the font if you want. You don't need this font in your local system, it will be applied directly. So you can see the interface change. This is for helping the people suffering from dyslexia. I'm taking some field. Uh, okay, so you see an um, input type in here. So that's what the built in input tool. You can select the language from here. So something is selected because of my previous usage. I can change the input method in my, my language. So this input tool is built in, and you can type in some 150 plus languages. So this is also a library, input method library written in jQuery. You can use it in your website. And the font embedding I showed, it's the jQuery web fonts. The language selector I showed, it's the universal language selector jQuery extension. Something more um, interesting um, is about the Google forms and the grammars. Um, this is our internationalization library a cube demo of internationalization library, and I said uh, uh, forming the sentences more organic or natural is very important. So I'm using a small sentence, like uh, somebody has a few number of kittens, and uh, he or she loves to play with them. So gender is also important, sometimes while constructing the sentence. Um, I'm selecting English to make sure that you all can read it. So you see that, um, the sentence is like, Mira has one kitten, she loves to play with Mira is female, just assume that Mira is female, so I need to use she. I'm changing the name to a male name, so see, um, the sentence changes to he. And you know that if the number of kittens are increasing, the sentence changes, right? So I'm changing this to two kittens. And you can see, loves to play with them, because previously it was each. And it has two kitten, it became kittens, right? Uh, uh, maybe I can show you some other demos also. This is available in almost all languages. Uh, all the languages supported in CLDR. It's very complex, but to, make, to convince you that it is an organic sentence, you, know, you must know the language, otherwise you cannot appreciate it. So anybody want to try some language history here? Anybody from Spanish? The, the way we construct the sentence, uh, it will be zero of now. 
it depends how we are constructing the sentence as it showed in the first sports slide. We said if you want to say something different than the numbers for some explicit numbers, like 12, you need to say dozen instead of just saying the digits. So it's, it's, uh, if you want to do that, you can do that. The feature is already done, but in this demo we didn't do that, so it's just numbers. Um, so uh, this um, grammatical formation of number is available in all languages we support, and it's quite complex, and we use CLIA and our own libraries, and the grammar support also to form formulate the sentence. Um, you are free to use it in your websites if you could. Of course, if you are a media wiki developer, please use it and make sure that your interface is natural and organic, and people don't complain that it's uh, bad language. Sent out one of the future things that this is incoming is relative updates. You can see, for example, here and for no social networks that they are used. Yeah, I hope you are familiar with this one. You, you posted some photo six seconds back. So, depending on the time, you need to show this kind of message six days ago, six years ago. So, this support is also coming. This is already in the it's beside from today morning onwards, JavaScript is coming. Uh, well, that's much about the um, uh, features we have, uh, the important features, and all these, uh, all these projects and general purpose open source libraries are all documented in our language portal. This is a URL if you want to remember, easy to remember, mediawiki.org slash wiki slash language portal. I think we have one or two questions. Okay. Two more minutes. Yeah. So the, all these projects, uh, JavaScript libraries are hosted in GitHub. It has uh, built-in examples and links to the examples in the GitHub main page. The GitHub account is github.com/wikimedia.